now, now I gotta live up to that somehow. <laughs> um, I have, I, they're recording this, they're filming it, so I have to stay around this area if I start to stray, which I'm pretty good at, just try to remind me, hopefully, that I have to come back to my little home base. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about everything in my life. I'm gonna talk to you, uh, it's important to me that I tell you the whole story, and I made that decision when I wrote the book and decided to come forward as an attempt survivor, not just as a writer, but as an attempt survivor. That's really the format of what I'm gonna talk about tonight. Um, I made that decision that if I'm gonna come forward with my story, it's important that I tell the entire story. If I'm gonna be of any value and insight to anybody, I put everything on the table. So I'm gonna, so there's no surprises. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about some of the trauma I experienced, about my attempt, about the mental health issues I struggled with, um, and mostly, the most important part of it, the value of it, what I did to move forward what I did to move on and, and be where I am today. Really Conceptual. So I'm feeling depressed, I'm feeling lonely, I'm feeling scared in the world. Fear, I, w I would categorize fear as a mental health issue in itself because fear completely destroyed me, completely. I, I felt the emotion of fear stronger than anything else I've ever experienced in my life. It completely controlled everything I did. I used to carry a bottle with me of, of my <clears throat> prescriptions, and I took them with dis discipline. But I remember looking back on it now, looking back at that now, I remember when I took them. I took them because I was sick. I took my medicine because I was broken. And I remember visualizing when I took my, my pills, when I poured them in my hand, it was almost like the scene in the movie where the guy's hands are shaking and he has to get it in him to be well. That's how I felt when I took medicine, when I took the pills. No one ever sat with me and explained to me what obsessive compulsive disorder was. No one ever said, there's a chemical imbalance in your brain and this is what's happening biologically to you. And when you take those pills, what those pills do is, you know, with OCD, there's a, there's a chemical called serotonin. Right? Imagine this. Imagine if the doctor had sat with me and said, there's a chemical called serotonin in your brain. It's responsible for helping you feel pleasure and it makes you feel a little better about things. It levels you out. But there's receptors that reabsorb that. And sometimes if they reabsorb too much of it, you become off balance, you become depressed. This medication is going to go into your system. It's going to find those receptors. It's going to block that from happening. And you'll be able to have more serotonin and you'll be able to feel better. No one explained to me that that was what was happening. No one said, when you take these pills, you're not taking them because you're sick. You're taking them because you're getting well. No one ever said that every pill I take was a step forward, was a step in the right direction, that every time I do it, I'm not sick, I'm getting well, I'm getting better. No one ever made me visualize or made me think to visualize that when I take that pill, it goes into my bloodstream and imagine it going through and finding where it's supposed to be and landing where it's supposed to land and blocking those receptors and doing its job. Imagine the power of visualizing that instead of sitting there and thinking that I'm broken. No one ever sat there and explained those things to me. And so I became my own fortune teller and I said my past was terrible my future is only going to be worse. And I tried to live in this little, little space of reality, the now. I tried to live in this little moment, and everything just got so small and so narrow. And that socket I was plugged into was incredibly dark. And the reality in front of me basically became non-existent. Find. It wasn't that I wanted a car, I didn't want a job, I didn't want a career, I didn't want a family. What I wanted was to be happy. That was it. That, that, that answer, to feel that answer, to feel that desire to say, my God, the only thing I want is to be happy. To wake up in the morning and be okay with it. To wake up and just want to get through the day and see another day and experience it, that's what I wanted. We have to be honest with ourselves. It's again why I think it's so important to ask the questions of ourselves and to give those answers for ourselves.
because we're, we're forced into being honest. We can't lie to ourselves. We can tell someone the answers that they want to hear, but we can't lie to ourselves. Trust. If there's anything that I wrote my book about, if there's anything, any message that I could give to anybody, it's belief and trust. Belief comes from our heart. It's immeasurable. It's what we feel. It's what we know. It's innate. But trust, trust is something that we can measure, we can predict, it's reality, it's the hard reality.